Blender has some surprisingly powerful fluid dynamic simulation tools, so let's get into that. We're actually not going to, for once, delete the default cube. We're going to be using it, and we're going to go in here into these physics property settings, and we're going to select the fluid option, because we're going to simulate fluid physics. Then we get this little menu over here, and we'll set this type to domain. That means that the simulation will only happen within the confines of this object and the sides of this cube are going to act like walls. So if we have water splashing up against it, we're going to have it just act as if it's a wall and it'll stop there. So very large simulations are going to need very large domains. The reason we use domains is to narrow down what needs to be simulated because simulation is a relatively heavy thing to do. We're going to set the domain type to being liquid because we're not simulating smoke or fire today. We're simulating liquid. Fire will be a video for another day. Then we can keep the liquid settings as they are. They're pretty good for water. You can play around with them a little bit again. That's for other tutorials sometimes down the line. We can turn on the particles. We have spray particles, foam particles and bubble particles. Spray particles will appear when there is a lot of movement and splashing to add little fine drops of water. Foam particles are particles that are on top of the water surface. And bubble particles are particles that will exist within the water itself when there's a lot of movement within the water. Of course, there's a lot of settings for all of that too. You can play around with that. That's not really what this tutorial is about. This is more so going over the basics. The best way to learn what these do is to just sit down, play with them, simulate a bunch of different things while just changing one variable at a time to just see what they do. Next up, we have the mesh, which we're going to enable because we want to have a physical mesh simulated here. You can opress this, so we have two different points where we can set the resolution. That's resolution divisions, it's by default set to 32. This is the actual resolution that is being simulated. Then within the mesh that gets generated after the simulation, you can then oppress that, and that's just subdividing the already generated data. So if you want quick, easy, simple simulations, but then you also want to have the mesh not being too low res, you use this. If you want very complex simulations, you're going to increase this, but you probably should leave this one a little lower. We're going to keep that at a low resolution here because otherwise it's going to take forever to simulate and to render. And I just want to show you how this works. And that's how you set up your domain, but there's no water in here at the moment. So we're going to just add a new object and we'll add a, another cube. Why not? And we're going to make this cube a fair bit smaller. You'll probably want to go into wireframe mode just so that you can see what you're doing. We're going to add this cube in here and we're also going to get this one into a fluid physics simulation. And this, the type, will be set to flow. The flow type will be liquid and you can immediately see there is liquid being simulated here now. Flow behavior will be inflow is it will continually keep producing the fluid. Outflow is a way for you to delete fluid. So anything that touches this object will then delete that fluid. And geometry is literally just the geometry of this object will be used as a basis for the water. For this video, we're gonna go geometry. In a lot of cases, you might wanna use an inflow and outflow system where you have for instance, a aqueduct, at one side you have the inflow, the other side you have the outflow, and you will keep continuously generating new water. If you're generating something like a lake or an ocean, geometry will probably be more so the route you're going with. If you're going with inflow, you will want to set the surface emission to being higher than zero, because you just like do it at one, because otherwise it won't be generating anything because you've set it to zero. Again, we're sticking with geometry for today. Here you also have an option for sampling sub-steps, which is just like subdividing. I've said it a million times by now, we're not gonna bother with that at the moment because 
as soon as those numbers go up higher, you're going to notice things are going to take a lot longer. Going back to our fluid domain, we have some cache settings here. So right now it's set to just replay, which means that it will calculate everything live, as you can see what I said about the fluid domain, and that will just cache it as things play back. And with this type of resolution, that works, but do be aware that I have a pretty fast CPU. And there's a CPU bound. You can't really use your GPU for this type of simulation. So while this very simple simulation on a very powerful CPU runs in damn near real time, for most purposes, you're not going to want that. And what you're going to do instead is you're going to change the type here from replay to either being modular, then you can simulate one aspect of this at a time. In general, you probably want to set it to all, and that will simulate the entire thing, calculate the entire thing, and then you can play it back from a bunch of cache files that it puts on your disk. So you specify where it starts the simulation and where it ends the simulation. You can then also specify a location where it should store those files. These files can get pretty big pretty quick, so do be aware of that. And then when you've got all those settings set, you just press bake all and it starts baking the simulation. Again, it's a pretty simple simulation on a pretty powerful CPU and you can still see it's taking a minute. The simulation that you saw at the start of this video as a render is a separate project from what we're doing right now with much higher resolution, much more detail. That simulation took me about five minutes or so to do. Which brings me to another point while this thing is simulating, and that is the render time's also going to be pretty high, especially if you're using the particles. The simulation that you saw at the beginning of the video, each frame took me between two and three and a half minutes render, and it's a 200 frame animation, so you're welcome. Okay, now that all the simulation data is cached, we can play this back without too much trouble. Obviously, there still is a lot of particles going on here and a lot of actual geometry going on, so it's still playing back at like four frames per second or so. Uh, but at least it's somewhat manageable now. So after that, we want to give this thing a bit of a material, I would want to say. So obviously, we're not going to want to render the actual uh, emitter. But right now, this looks like milk, which if you're simulating milk, fantastic. You're more or less done. But if you're simulating water, which is what we're doing here today, we're going to delete that and we're going to replace it with a glass BSDF, plugging that into the surface. We can set the IOR, which is the refraction index, to 1.23, which is just the standard uh, for water. This is literally just physics. You will see a little bit of blockiness to your mesh, and that is because it is not mega high resolution. You can just shade that smooth and it'll take care of that. If you now go into your viewport shading, you will see the water looks all transparent. You can give it a bit of a color. Don't go overboard with the color, but making it a little bit more blue might be somewhat more pleasing to the eye. Then back in our normal view, we can go into our particle properties and we've got separate particle systems for the liquid itself. We're going to leave that well alone. But we've also got the spray, the foam, and the bubble particles, which you can see there's quite a lot of particles going on here. <laughs> but in the render tab, we can uh, change the render as from halo to object. Just add in a new icosphere. Do be aware that you probably want to set the subdivisions back to one. We don't want to have it be a very big icosphere with a lot of geometry. Just make it small, pull it off to the side, and then we can start rendering these particles as this icosphere which is going to add a lot of geometry as you can see all of those little lines that were just added all particles and they all have a decent amount of vertices so try to keep it down with the amount of detail there is all i'm saying with me recording this we're not going to give all of the other particles uh geometry as well because my computer might actually crash if we do that but well, those are the basics of fluid simulation in Blender. In the future, we might get more into specific types of fluids like 
simulating honey, for instance, making it more viscous, that kind of stuff. For the time being, this is the basics. I would very much implore you to just take some time, mess around with the parameters, and do be aware that you're going to be waiting a lot. That, that's part of the deal when you're doing simulations, is you're changing a couple of values, and then you're just kind of sitting around until the computer decides what that should look like. 